Hello everybody, my name is Pancakes and welcome to this brand new episode of Media Buffet. Today, I am joined by me, myself and I, as we will be delving into the latest details and developments in the 2023-24 NFL offseason following that um, miraculous run by the Chiefs to win their two-beat Super Bowl, which I still dread to this day. Now, uh, what we'll be covering is player transactions. We will be talking about how stars within the NFL and other up-and-coming players alike have been signing with different teams and how this has affected their rosters, their playoff contention, or team contention in general, and general league well-being. So yeah, we'll be going by position. Of course, we won't be covering every position, every player, because if that happens, we'll be here the entire day. So we'll be covering only players who made a switch of teams, not players who resigned, made contract extensions, made franchise tags, restructurings. That's not going to happen. So players like James Elliott, I mean, sorry, Jake Elliott, kicker for the Eagles, Mike Evans, wide receiver for the Bucks, or Miles Killebrew, safety for the Steelers, are not going to be talked about because they're simply already in the team and there's not much to talk. So there's that. I also want to make it clear that there's some yard work being done in my neighborhood so if you hear any noises impromptu during the episode that's a simple explanation so now that that's out of the way let's get started we're going to start with the quarterback position which is arguably one of the most star-studded positions that we'll cover today because simply put the quarterback is a very versatile position it's one of the most talked about in the sport and the quarterback is responsible for throwing the ball, you can also run the ball. Anything that you can do with the ball that falls within the NFL's rules, the quarterback is responsible for. And yeah, that's why it's one of the most star-studded, because it's one of the most versatile and one of the most talked about positions in the league. Now, I may have to issue a bit of a disclaimer that I may have a bit of a slight bias with the Steelers and the 49ers because I'm a Steelers fan and I've also been watching a couple of Niners games and I know a lot more of their players than any other team so yeah it's not that much of a bias I'll be I'll try to be as fair and partial as possible but yeah just a quick disclaimer however it doesn't help that the first player on our quarterbacks transcendence list is yeah sorry the first quarterback on our transactions list is Russell Wilson, who is ending his journey with the Denver Broncos to join the Pittsburgh Steelers on a one-year deal through the veteran minimum. Now, let me just say a couple of things. I believe that at least for the Steelers, this is the greatest signing that they could have achieved in recent memory. Because... Not only have the Steelers been facing a quarterback crisis since Big Ben retired, but also it just adds a lot more depth and connection to this fragile offense. Let me just say that Mike Tomlin led this team to 10-7 and in a playoff appearance. Any other coach would have likely failed. The Steelers would be 7-10, 6-11, 5-12 right now. Best case scenario if it weren't for Mike Tomlin. That's how bad the situation is getting because this offense, just no other coach could have developed it. And Russell Wilson being added to this already on the rise offense is actually the greatest move that the Steelers could have made because they need someone under center. They need a recognizable, versatile player at QB. And Russell Wilson is the perfect fit for that because he came out of the Broncos in a frustrated situation where the team is just horribly ran and comes to the Steelers under the pretext that he wants to play championship football and that is what he will play he will play championship football and hopefully with this star-studded offense we can make a greater push within the playoffs at least so yeah there's that Russell will sign for the veteran minimum which I think is one of the greatest steals that can happen Super Bowl champion multiple playoff appearance Russell Wilson I'd say, like, of course, he may be on par, if not better, but Russell Wilson, accolade-wise, is more or less similar to Matt Stafford, and 
since Matt Stafford got a lot of praise when he joined the Rams and led them to his first Super Bowl victory and their first in 20 years, I think it's quite simply put really great that Russell Wilson with the Steelers now. And I hope that he does great things. Now, the next move that I think is actually quite monumental is Kirk Cousins, who moved on from the Vikings and signed a four-year deal with the Atlanta Falcons. Now, quite frankly, I think that Kirk Cousins is one of the most mixed players in terms of reputation. A lot of Vikings players love him. A lot of Vikings fans hate him. But overall, he's a good quarterback. He's not the best, but he's good. He puts up the most respectable numbers and leads the Vikings to where they need to be. Now, the Vikings have had recent trouble with um, some of their other roster positions. And that is why I'd say they've entered a mild rebuild phase because they're now expected to acquire a quarterback in the draft if they don't get another one. Because they also had Josh Dubs as a backup, former Steeler. But they decided to move on from him too. So I think that they're definitely entering a rebuild phase. Now, other than that, uh, I would like to say, I forgot to add it with the Russell Wilson talk. Russell Wilson threw 20-something touchdowns last season alone with the Broncos. And people still said that he was kind of mid or garbage. Russell Wilson throwing for 20-something touchdowns last season alone was actually more than every Steeler quarterback has been able to do since Big Ben retired. They have not been able to throw 20-something touchdowns since his retirement, and that's a big problem because at the end of the day, scoring gets you wins. And I'm actually dumbfounded with the fact that the Steelers managed to win 10 games with one of the lowest scoring corp in the NFL. I gotta give credit to Eddie Faulkner, running back coach who entered as interim offensive coach after they fired Matt Canada, thank God. But yeah, that's just something I wanted to add. Now, Kirk Cousins and the Falcons make sense because the Falcons right now are reeling out of their rebuild phase. They recently moved on from Matt Ryan a couple of seasons ago who entered the Colts and they kind of had to like move some pieces around in their offense. I mean, they signed Kyle Pitts, they, they acquired a bunch of other offensive stars or up-and-coming talents, and they most recently acquired Desmond Ritter in, I think it was this draft class or the past draft class, which was notoriously bad for QBs. But yeah, generally, Desmond Ritter with the Falcons is no more because they decided to move on from him. And like the Steelers, they needed a trusted face to make their ambitions come true and signing Kirk Cousins to them was the best move they could have. It was either that or Justin Fields who is coming up later on. Now the next move in our quarterbacks list is Jacoby Brissett to the Patriots. Let me just say that Jacoby Distret, uh, sorry, Jacoby Brissett and Tyrod Taylor have shared a similar destiny and that is becoming bridge quarterbacks or quarterbacks that serve as temporary bolt welds in the meantime that their teams actually make the moves necessary to actually give them their ambitions and yeah Jacoby Brissett has actually been a prime example of that role he signed with the Patriots following their decision to move on from Mac Jones also being covered later on and yeah, I feel like Jacoby Brissett can actually give the Patriots the stability they need because he, like Kirk Cousins and Russell Wilson, is an experienced player who can get things done. Definitely not to the former two's level, but he can get things done. Something Mac Jones couldn't do in the horrible coaching situation that the Patriots recently underwent. Now, I do want to point out that Jacoby Brissett was a Super Bowl champion as a backup for the Patriots, but... Yeah, he's re-signing with them. It seems like the team needs a familiar face to lead them to some more wins because, quite frankly, that's not what they've been getting. Mac Jones, in a couple of seasons now, has been acting horribly with the team in the, in the same draft class that Trevor Lawrence was drafted, mind you. And, yeah, <coughs> it's just dumbfounding. Dumbfounding to see that a team like the Patriots, who five years ago tied the Steelers Super Bowl record are now in the decadence of the NFL.
Was it deserved? Yeah, I'd say. But what can you say? Now, speaking about Tyron Taylor, he is signing with the Jets as another veteran quarterback looking for another team. Tyrod Taylor also is a Super Bowl champion, this time with the Ravens in 2013. But nonetheless, Tyrod Taylor is another prime example of what it means to be like a star backup quarterback. Tyrod Taylor doesn't have that talent to be like the star quarterback of a, of a franchise. And this is, and the Jets is no exception because the Jets most recently acquired Aaron Rodgers. And assuming he doesn't get injured two plays into his first game like he did last season, I think that Tyrod Taylor can make a solid backup to Aaron Rodgers. If he gets injured again, then Tyrod Taylor will probably have the spotlight for the season. But he's had that same scenario with other teams in the past. The Chargers, the Giants, the Bills, the Browns, I think. I don't remember. But yeah, he's like a journeyman. That's the word I'm looking for. Only that he's actually been able to keep teams afloat something other journeymen like Ryan Fitzpatrick haven't been able to do with every team that he's been on. Tyrod Taylor, he has. At least for a bit. So, yeah. Uh, moving on from players. The next quarterback on our list of transactions is one that we spoke about previously, not. <coughs> that is Jemias Winston to the Browns. Now, Jemias Winston actually played key roles in his stints with both I think it was the Bucks and the Saints I gotta check that but yeah James Winston has been keeping their teams afloat as the previous two quarterbacks mentioned and yeah he played with the Bucks Saints and now with the Browns he was an instrumental piece in keeping the Saints boat afloat after Drew Brees retirement and yeah, he's actually managed quite a number of accolades, but no, no, I'd say he's like a mid-table kind of player who can get teams to where they need to be as a bridge quarterback, similar to Mitch Trubisky with the Steelers. Now, moving on, the next player on a quarterback list is Justin Fields, who is actually traded to the Steelers from Chicago in exchange for a six round pick. Now let me just say this. Justin Fields single-handedly led the Bears crumbling offense to near playoff scenarios that would have been successful were the Lions or Packers present within their division. Now, I also gotta say this. Justin Fields being traded for a six round pick alone is quite a steal like like i said before omar khan has been making some amazing moves with the steelers and this justin fields move is no exception mike tomlin recently clarified that justin fields and the steelers he is going to have a pole position to be the backup quarterback and when i first heard about this i first thought about the scenario between alex smith and patrick mahomes of course russell wilson isn't that like star quarterback who was with the team for a couple of years because Russell Wilson just got signed but yeah I would say that this is a similar scenario where Russell Wilson can serve as a mentor while he leads the Steelers to their ambitions and Justin Fields can serve as the backup and have mentorship from Russell Wilson and yeah quite frankly I'd say that this is a very good scenario for the Steelers because this is exactly what they need at the quarterback position. As I said, the Steelers faced a quarterback crisis very recently and this is what they need. This is just what they need. And yeah, I can't say anything else. Justin Fields is a great fit for the Steelers. If it wasn't the Steelers, he probably would have landed in Atlanta if they didn't land Kirk Cousins. But yeah, there's that. Next up is Joe Flacco to the Colts. Recently, he's making headlines with his late season heroics with the Browns after Deshaun Watson got injured. Let me just say this, Deshaun Watson generally, he's fallen off as a player. Like, yeah, he was the star quarterback for the Texans, but after those sexual assault allegations, he just hasn't been the same. He hasn't been displaying the same level of talent, and when he got injured, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, he hasn't been the same. 
he may still be the guy for the Browns, but I'm pretty sure that's just because of his name. And I may be biased as a Steelers fan, but yeah, I just don't think that the Browns should have stuck with Dejon Watson. I feel like they should have given Joe Flacco a chance to compete because he showed that he still has got it in him. And yeah, I would say that Joe Flacco to the Colts is a good move because they also decided to move on from Matt Ryan recently. But actually, no, they didn't decide to move on. He retired. That's why they needed to fill that hole, similar to Andrew Luck. But yeah, uh, Joe Flacco to the Colts is a great move because like Kirk Cousins, they get a veteran quarterback. And yeah, let's just see where it goes from there. Now, next up, Mac Jones got traded to the Jaguars for a couple of picks. And let me just say, I find it extremely funny because Mac Jones was initially traded with, I mean, signed, drafted with the Patriots in the same class as Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence, mind you. But his talent hasn't been, he hasn't been able to span off that talent. Justin Fields showed flashes of talent with the Bears, but a crumbling coaching staff caused him to be traded to the Steelers. And Mac Jones got traded to the Jaguars, who will now ironically serve as the backup to one of his former draft classes, Trevor Lawrence. And blah, 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 I feel like it's just funny. It's just, it's just really, it's actually karma acting in its own because Mac Jones, the same guy who landed the Pro Bowl in his first season and gritted his way to a invalid touchdown is now serving as a backup for one of the crumbling teams within the NFL that are like mid-table currently. But yeah, let's just see how it spins out. I, I don't have any more comments. Unlike this next player, quarterback Mason Rudolph, who signed with the Titans. I believe that Mason Rudolph to the Titans is also one of the most unfair moves recently within the NFL, like Joe Flacco, because I feel like the Steelers should have given a, fit, a chance. They should have given Rudolph a chance because like Joe Flacco, he showed up with some very need, very much needed late season heroics for the Steelers. He single-handedly led the team to win three straight games when they were 7-7, seven and seven, Kenny Pickett was out, and Mitch Trubisky was also out. And, yeah. It's a great... It's a great move for the Titans, who chose to move on from Ryan Tannehill, but not for the Steelers. I feel like the Steelers should have kept Mason Rudolph for a backup role. He's been one of their most loyal players. He's had head down and kept on training for all of his time with the Steelers. In after the Miles Garrett incident, but yeah, it, he he got done dirty. I feel like he should have been given a chance. Now, uh, on the latest, Gardner Minshew signed with the Raiders, and I don't know how to feel about that. I feel like he was last with the Colts, but yeah, quite frankly, Gardner Minshew to the Raiders is a good and respectable move because he's had his fair flashes of talent. I compare him in similar to other quarterbacks who've done great within the league, such as, hey, Neil, what was his name? This guy, in, uh, fuck, hold on. Yeah, I'd say like he's a slightly better version of Tyrod Taylor, and Bela Bela, I feel like he can get it done for the Raiders, but I don't know. The Raiders have been a mixed team recently. They recently had star backup Jimmy Garoppolo, be, be the head of the Raiders, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that. I just hope that they can get it done because the Raiders need a much necessary morale boost after their poor performances within Las Vegas. Now, uh, speaking about Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota was pretty much his twin because they both played together in the same division for a while. Marcus Mariota signed with the Commanders which I feel like that's just straight up a retirement home move. The Cardinals recently made a lot of moves a couple of seasons ago when they signed uh, J.J. Watt, James Conner, a couple of other players to their roster, and they just didn't span out. They didn't do well at all, even with those stars winning the roster. And yeah, 
I feel like Marcus Mariota to the Commanders is a similar move because he hasn't been doing great, but he hasn't been doing bad either. But he's heading to one of the worst teams, if not the worst, in the NFL. So, yeah, what can I say? Now, next up is Sam Darnold moving to the Vikings. And it's a great move. He served as a good backup to Brock Purdy in the 49ers. And... Yeah, I feel like Sam Darnold to the Vikings is a great move because they chose to move on from Josh Dubs and Kirk Cousins. So I'd say they're practically rebuilding at this point. And Sam Darnold, I feel like he's in a make-or-break position here because his broken career with the Jets and Panthers and then, and then successful stint with the 49ers, I'd say he has a, he's had a rocky career thus far. And how he does with the Vikings is either going to make or break his legacy within the NFL. Now... Desmond Ritter was traded to the Cardinals in exchange for Rondale Moore to the Falcons. And I'd say that Desmond Ritter to the Cardinals is an eh kind of move. Because right now, Kyler Murray and Desmond Ritter are the guys for the Cardinals. And I don't know. They've been... I have no comment on them. They're not great. And they're not bad either. But yeah, they've also haven't been in the best team situations and I feel like they have to make moves within other regiments of their teams especially the coaching staff in order to actually succeed as teams Desmond Ritter to the Cardinals I like it but I'm not sure if it's gonna work out now Josh Dubs to the 49ers I feel like this is a great move for the 49ers because Josh Dubs showed flashes of talent with the Steelers like Mason Rudolph, he wasn't given the chance to pan out. So he was later dealt to the Vikings. And he showed great heroics as the Vikings back up. But yeah, Josh Dubs to the Niners. I feel like he's making a name for himself as, as a star backup. He's up and coming. Similar to the roles of Tyrod Taylor and... I mean, just the other guy. But yeah, I just wish all the best to him because Josh Dobbs is one of the most underrated quarterbacks in recent memory for the NFL so yeah I completely lost my list okay here we go next up uh, Sam Howell was traded to the Seahawks from the commanders and I feel like he got saved early similar to what happened with the Panthers when the Jets traded him there and uh, no when the Jets traded Sam Darnold there. And yeah. I don't know man. Uh, the Seahawks recently decided to move on from Drew Locke and Geno Smith. I don't wait. I don't know if Geno Smith is actually in their roster. I feel like they sh like Geno Smith should be the quarterback number one. But yeah. Sam Howell going to the Seahawks is a great move. Because they, they actually fleece the commanders. I mean it's the commanders. What can you expect? But yeah. No other comments, I just hope... Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I just wish him the best. Now, Jimmy G, Jimmy Garoppolo, to the Rams. He's recently had the kind of slander treatment because he hasn't been doing the best. But hey, he's put up respectable numbers. But he's had some other troubles regarding his performance, especially his interceptions. With the Raiders, after he was dealt from the Niners, I'm pretty sure. But no, no, let's just hope that things pan out well with the Rams, who I don't know. No, I don't think that Matthew Stafford is still in the roster. I f he could be, but I'm not sure. Last I remember, Baker Mayfield was in a transitional period for the Rams, and he then got dealt to the Bucks. But yeah, Jimmy G is on the Rams now. And let's just hope that whatever he does, he drives the team forward because the Rams, after their Super Bowl win, have made the playoffs, unlike the Broncos, but let's just hope that it stick. Now, the last quarterback move within our list is a rather regrettable one, not for the team who made it, but for the team who got him. And I'm talking about Kenny Pickett signing with the Eagles. Now, let me just say this. The moment the Steelers signed... Russell Wilson, Kenny Pickett, single-handedly walked out of the facility and chose another team. And I think that that's the best thing he could have done. 
since last season, Kenny Pickett has been dealing with some drama internally because, yeah, he was frustrated when Mason Rudolph led the team with his late season heroics. And quite frankly, I think you're not, like, as a player, you should not be in a position where you complain about who gets played on their center. Because as a player, you're given the opportunity by a team to play based on your talent. And if you don't show that talent, then you're not going to play. And with the Steelers, that is single-handedly their philosophy. They are not moving on from that simply because you're the most recent up-and-coming star from your university. I feel like Kenny Pickett is still with the mentality of he is the best quarterback on their roster. And... He went from potentially competing for the starting role to a definite backup role because the Eagles have Jalen Hurts, who two seasons ago led them to a Super Bowl appearance. And he put up great numbers last season, but they fell short to the rising Buccaneers. And yeah, I feel like Kenny Pickett getting out of the Steelers was a good move because Mike Tomlin and Omar Khan has re- have recently pulled their big boy pants up and manned up within the free agency period. And Kenny Pickett getting out of the team is good because this is a team of competition. And if you're not willing to compete for your job, then simply get out of the team. And the Steelers understood the assignment perfectly in this case. Now we are finally moving on to our next position in line, which is the wide receiver position. Obviously, there are a lot less players here than quarterback, but yeah, equal talent, I'd say. Now, Curtis Samuel was recently dealt to the Bills, and he put up respectable numbers with his recent team, the Commanders, I'm pretty sure. I don't remember his team, but I think it was that one. And yeah, he's he got out of a regrettable situation with Washington, and... Let's just hope that his talents pan out in Buffalo, a team that is kind of reforming their offense. Now, Mike Williams being dealt to the Jets. The Chargers have had a rough offseason because they've dealt away some of their greatest talents, including Mike Williams. Yeah, they needed the cap space, but yeah, I don't know how Chargers fans are going to cope with losing Mike Williams. He's the, He's been with the team for a lot of time now and moving to the Jets is not the best option because the Jets are also a trashy team when it comes to coaching staff so I just wish him the best and hope that he actually leads the Jets to more scoring and more wins hopefully. The opposite could be said for the next player on our list which is Jerry Judy who got traded to the Browns. Now the Browns are by no means the best team in the AFC let alone their division but Jerry Judy getting traded to the Browns is one of the greatest things that could have happened to him because he is exiting a decrepit situation in in the Broncos, which is quite frankly one of the worst coaching staffs, as I've said before, and he is entering a team who is reeling from some noticeable recent offensive losses, such as the loss of OBJ last season, and they need a hole to fill up with with the wide receiver with the loss of OBJ, and Jerry Judy, I feel it could get the job done if he pans out. So, wish him the best. I mean, not that much, since they're in our division, but let's just hope that they will suffice. Now, Van Jefferson to the Steelers. This could either be a depth signing, or Van Jefferson going to a, to a wide receiver free position, but he was most recently seen... Uh, doing great things for the Rams in their Super Bowl winning season. And yeah, I mean, he's played well for them. What can I say? But um, they chose to move on. I don't know what to tell you, but let's just hope that things pan out and that they can fill up those holes. Now, I just, like most recently, found out about this move, but Cordale Patterson, one of the most notorious offensive players kick returners and yeah just playmaker overall in recent memory signed with the Steelers on a two year deal and I think that's really good he could either retire with the team or he could like 
lead them to where they want to be, which is make a greater playoff push. So Cordell Patterson to the Steelers is a great move. I hope that they can actually take advantage of it and, yeah, just make great things. I am actually so glad that Omar Khan is actually making bombastic moves like these. Now, <coughs> Calvin Ridley to the Titans. Like I said before, the Falcons decided to move on from a couple of players, and Calvin Ridley is no exception. The Titans, who are reforming their offense after moving on from Ryan Tannehill and other players, need to fill up a couple of holes, and Calvin Ridley is a great option for that. I believe that most recently Julio Jones played for the Titans, but they haven't been doing pretty well. So I'm pretty sure that Calvin Ridley is a great addition to their roster. Now... Marquise Brown going to the Chiefs. Marquise Brown had a great career with the Ravens, and I believe he had a stint with another team past season. But yeah, he's moving on to the Chiefs. And this is a very dangerous signing because the Chiefs have a great wide receiving corp. I believe most recently it was Juju Smith-Schuster, Isaiah Pacheco. I'm, I feel he was, was Pacheco a running back? Full, like I don't know what he was, but he was an offensive player. And uh, yeah, I believe that the Chiefs are making the moves necessary in order to get them to where they want to be. And that is a free peat. I hope that they don't achieve that at all. The Chiefs are the villain of the NFL right now. And I hope that they lose every game they have. Now, next up, Keenan Allen was traded to the Bears. Like I said before, the Chargers are, ma are deciding to move on from one of their most recognizable players and heavy hit losses overall very heavy losses i hope that they can make a recovery in the draft or free agency but yeah keenan allen landing in the bears is a great move for the bears who are reforming their offense they ha they have a great situation they actually do have a great situation they've added a couple of good players and let's just hope that the next quarterback on the bears roster can adjust to those weapons now Ray Ray McLeod moving on to the Falcons. Ray Ray McLeod had a great career with the Steelers, serving as a pretty good uh, special teams member and kick returner. But uh, he most recently served a stint with the Niners, and they decided to move on from him, which I think is a bad move because Ray Ray McLeod is a star in the special teams, and I believe that he deserves a chance with any team he gets. So. Ray Ray McLeod to the Falcons, great move for the Falcons, not so much for the Niners. Now, another former Steeler, as of this move, Deontay Johnson is decided to move on and sign with the Panthers after being released by the Steelers. Now, I have a mixed take when it comes to this deal because Deontay Johnson did have... Uh, a record of dropping a lot of key passes but I feel like that could have been fixed in terms of the of the quarterback staff instead of the roster itself I don't know man I don't know how to feel about Deontay Johnson I feel like he was Kadarius Tony part two like he's a great player but he just dropped way too many passes he's gotten better at that in recent memory but yeah I feel like the Steelers acted too early but hey if they took the risk, so be it. They needed the cat space, apparently. So, he signed with the Panthers, who are also another poverty team. But let's just hope that it works out for both teams. Now, now we're moving on to the running back position, who has some notable names within their ranks, and a couple of surprising moves. Starting with Antonio Gibson, going to the Patriots. Now, Antonio Gibson is a great player. He did great things for the Commanders, but... As many other players mentioned previously, he decided to skip that situation and sign with the Patriots. I'd say going from bad situation to slightly better situation, but nada. I just hope that Antonio Gibson pans out well with the Patriots so that they can get some more scoring on their ranks. Of course, not enough to lead into the playoffs, God, God forbid. But yeah, I hope Antonio Gibson gets his well-deserved team transition. Now, probably the most impactful move in the division and the league, most likely, Derrick Henry, most dominant running back and 
arguably offensive player in recent memory, is signing with the Baltimore Ravens. Now, this is a very dangerous... I'm sorry, I had to interrupt myself because, quite frankly, the grass guys do not give a fuck that I'm recording an episode, but yeah. Derrick Henry to the Ravens is quite possibly the most impactful move for their offense because, dude, I believe that the only defenses capable of even, like, stopping Derrick Henry are the Ravens' defense, the Lions' defense, and the Steelers' defense. And, yeah, I'm just saying that because the Steelers have been able to beat, like, the Ravens the past three years unscathed somehow, so... Yeah, I just hope that that keeps being the case, even with their most recent additions, including linebacker Patrick Queen, which we'll touch on later later on. Now, Joe Mixon to the Texans, escaping a deteriorating situation in Cincinnati, moving on to a rising team. Great talent, but let's just hope how it pans out. Now, Tony Pollard to the Titans. The Cowboys are quite possibly the worst free agency team in recent memory because they've been making a lot of regrettable moves recently and Tony Pollard is no exception. Yeah, man, I don't know how you can release Tony Pollard. Like, dude, he's been making great progress for your team and you just let him go like that. To the Titans, who do need to fill up that hole of losing Derrick Henry, but I don't know, man. I, I don't know what's going on with the team anymore. I just hope that the Titans can improve and the Cowboys deteriorate because they've had their chances. They've had their chances recently in playoff runs, but they haven't they just they just haven't been able to convert that into actual success. They haven't won a playoff game, I believe, in a while. So yeah. They don't deserve to be in the playoffs anymore. Simple as that. Now Gus Edwards to the Chargers. The Ravens did, did need to make that cat space and space in general for Derrick Henry. So they decided to move on from Gus Edwards and he signed with the Chargers, who recently also lost Austin Eckler. So, yeah, I just hope that they can actually pan things out because the Chargers lost a lot of players. And let's just hope that Gus Edwards can fill up the holes that they have recently made for themselves. Now, Devin Singletary to the Giants. Houston decided to move on from Devin Singletary, surprisingly. I believe that it was his cap space, but nada, let's just hope that they can actually make use of that money, because he signed with a rather regrettable team, the New York Giants. So let's just hope that Devin Singletary will make a name for himself with the Giants, or just, like, hold on until another team is interested in him. Now, speaking about the Giants, this is one of the most funniest moves in recent memory, because Saquon Barkley their star running back, has decided to sign with the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, it was quite mutual, I think. DeAndre Swift moved on to the Bears, so the Eagles needed a star running back, and Saquon Barkley had trouble with the Giants recently because they mismanaged him a lot. So, yeah, karma served. To the Eagles he goes. Now, (coughs) Austin Eckler to the Commanders is pretty much the same thing as J.J. Watts to the Cardinals. They're creating a retirement home, and damn, Austin Eckler did not deserve that. No comment. DeAndre Swift to the Bears. Great move. I mean, the Eagles got Saquon Barkley, so they're good on that, and the Bears got DeAndre Swift. Let's just hope that the coaching staff can actually work with those players to move them forward. Now, Josh Jacobs to the Packers. Absolutely great move. Jordan Love needs some weapons to throw to in the offense, and Josh Jacobs is an actually great example of that. And Packers had the greatest offensive duo in the AFC, in the NFC for about a couple of hours before Aaron Jones got moved to the Vikings. Brett Favre, simple as that. Now, uh, next up on our list of decisions is the offensive line. I decided to to group together the tight ends, offensive tackles, centers, guards, now it's tackles, all that, because not all of them make a name for themselves, and I feel like this is a respectable list to put them all on a singular unit. Now, uh, 
as we were saying. Okay, so let's get started. The first move that I want to discuss. Hold on. And quick disclaimer, I will go rapid fire with this one because I don't want to extend this episode for way too long. And yeah, not a lot of very noticeable names here. So, uh, Will Clapp, center. I believe, yeah, signed a one-year deal with the Bills. Funny name, um, the Chargers decided to move on. Let's just hope that they can make up with that with their recent signings. Chikuma Okoro, uh, former Steelers offensive tackle, signed a free agent deal with the Patriots. The Steelers needed to make up for that cap space, so they dealt him to the Patriots. The Patriots have had a trashy offense as of late, so let's just hope that Chukuma, along with other off-season off additions, can help to that. Now, <coughs> oh, sorry, Josh Jones to the Ravens. Uh, I feel like Josh Jones to the Ravens is a pretty good deal because Josh Jones was escaping a situation with the, with the Texans and they needed to free up the space, so Josh Jones to the Ravens. Let's see how they go from there that explosive offense. Next up, Mike Gesicki to the Bengals. Mike Gesicki recently exited a situation with the Patriots, I believe, to sign a deal with the Bengals. And it's good because he escaped a deteriorating situation with the Patriots to move on to a respectable team, that being the Bengals. Now, the Bengals did make a Super Bowl run recently, but they haven't been making the moves to maintain that. So, yeah, Mike Gesicki, I wish you the best. Now... Lloyd Cushenberry to the Titans. Lloyd Cushenberry to the Titans is actually a pretty good move. I forgot to say Mike Gesicki is a Titan. Um, Lloyd Cushenberry to the Titans is a good move because the Titans need a center. They need to reform that offense after moving on from Ryan Tannehill. And let's just hope that Mason Rudolph and Lloyd Cushenberry can get the job done. Next up, Matt Nelson to the Giants. Quite frankly... The Eagles O-line is star-studded, but they haven't make, been making a lot of additions. So, yeah, I'd say that. Jo- like Matt Nelson to the Giants is one of the only good moves in recent memory that I can make of. Because he played an instrumental role with the Lions. So, let's just hope it works out for them. Next up on our list is... Oof, sorry. I spaced out. <coughs> Landon Dickerson to the Eagles. Landon Dickerson, Dickerson adds great depth to an already star-studded Eagles O-line. But I'm including the extension because, if I'm honest, the O-line within the NFC East is not a good one. So, yeah. I just had an out of pity. Next up is Zach Ertz, tight end, who recently signed a deal with the Commanders. He most recently played for, I'm sorry, hold on. Yeah, he most recently played for another team, that team being the Cardinals. And he's just moving around the league now. So let's just hope that they can fill up the holes that they need to cover. Jonah Williams to the Cardinals. Um, Speaking of the Cardinals. And yeah, Jonah Williams to the Cardinals is a good addition, respectable one, because they need some depth in the offensive line to protect their already fragile Kyler Murray, the quarterback. And last up in the offense, Jonah Jackson to the Rams. The Rams need to protect their offensive line. They're on the rise doing that because, yeah, it might have cost Matt Stafford his career. And let's hope that it's not the case for whoever is under center next up with this addition. Now, (coughs) we'll now cover the defensive line. And the defensive line is actually another one that doesn't have a lot of names on it because a lot of teams haven't been making a lot of moves with this one. But yeah, let's start. There's only six total players. The defensive line, we're going to be covering defensive backs, defensive ends, defensive tackles, and edge rushers because the secondary is the other side of the ball, is that of the defensive ball, has a lot of more players. Those are the linebackers, cornerbacks, and safeties. So for now, the rest of the D-line is going to be within this segment. Daniel Hunter to the Texans. 
Danny O'Hunter to the Texans. Wow. It's actually a really great move because the Texans need to step up their defensive side of the ball if they want to continue making playoff contention. C.J. Stroud, great player overall, but they need some players in the off, on the de- defensive side. And adding Daniel Hunter to that roster, absolute great move. He most recently made... Uh, yeah, he most recently made... Sorry. Name for himself with the Vikings. And let's just hope that that can continue to be the case with the Texans. Now, Ronnie Harrison to the Colts. Ronnie Harrison to the Colts is also a great move because the Colts are kind of like in a restructuring period and if they want to continue to make runs they gotta step up that defensive side of the ball and adding Ronnie Harrison is gonna get them there Ronnie Harrison is a safety what is he doing here okay so Christian Wilkins to the Raiders Christian Wilkins made a very he he got a bag recently he moved on from the Dolphins and he was signed by the Raiders. It's actually a pretty monumental move because the Dolphins lose a key piece. Let's hope that they can get that fixed in the draft. But yeah, Christian Wilkins is signing with the Raiders. Let's see if that can bring Las Vegas to playoff contention. Now, next up is Brian Burns to the Giants. He recently got dealt from the Panthers to the Giants. And Brian Burns going to the Giants is actually a great move because the Giants, I believe, now have a great defensive duo. And, yeah, let's just hope that they can actually make use of that and not waste their talents like they've done recently with Saquon Barkley. Now, Chase Young, a notable player for the 49ers, was recently dealt to the Saints. And, yeah, what can I say? They needed the cap space and they had to deal Chase Young for it. Ironically... The Saints, who were also one of the crippling depth teams in terms of cap space, just got a great player. So let's just hope that they can actually make use of him. The last player I wanted to make note of is Jordan Elliott, who is signing with the 49ers. Jordan Elliott to the 49ers is a great move because the 49ers have a great D-line as it is, but they need depth. And signing Jordan Elliott adds great depth to that. Now... The next category and second to last category we'll be covering, it's the secondary. Here we'll be covering the linebackers, cornerbacks, and safeties. Mike Edwards to the Bills. Didn't I cover that previously? No, that was Mike Williams. Mike Edwards to the Bills. Like I said, the Chargers are restructuring their team around Justin Herbert and their remaining defensive stars. And dealing Mike Edwards was just something they need to do to get some cat space off. Who will fill that hole? I have no idea. But who knows? The Chargers have been signing a lot of players recently. And they did sign two linebackers. But let's just hope that they can work it out. Mike Edwards to the Bills. Great move. Okay, so the secondary is going to have a lot of stars here. Because a lot of the other monumental moves has been courtesy of this category. Now... Next up is Kendall Fuller, who was dealt to the Dolphins. Now, Kendall Fuller recently decided to move on from the Dolph- um, from his previous team, sorry, and decided to go to the Dolphins, who need much-needed restructuring within their defense. They've been explosive in their offense, but they need to restructure that defense if they want to continue making playoff runs in hopes of actually making them this time in a very competitive AFC. Now, he recently escaped the situation with the Commanders in hopes of making greater appearances with the Dolphins. And, yeah, he's a good cornerback, I would say. Like, he gets the job done, but let's just hope that that performance can reciprocate with the Dolphins. Jordan Poyer was also dealt to the Dolphins recently as a safety he signed a one-year deal per Ian Rappaport. And, yeah. He most recently played with the Bills. So, this is like a rivalry signing. But, nah, nah. The Dolphins do need some depth in that, in that secondary. And, Jordan Poyer, I believe, can give them that depth if he gets trained correctly. Now, 
Let's just hope that's the case for them. Von Bell to the Bengals. It's a great depth signing. I Wasn't that a re-sign, actually? I have no idea. Yeah, Von Bell recently played with the Panthers, actually. I am so wrong. But, yeah. Uh, Von Bell as a safety also adds a bit of a depth chart to the Bengals. And I believe that it's great for them. And it's a re-signing because he also played for the Bengals previously. But... I believe that they're just reconciliating their choices, I guess. Devin Bush to the Browns. Devin Bush was part of that crucial and key Steelers team that led them to the playoffs with one of Big Ben's fleeting seasons after later on getting crushed by the Browns, unfortunately. But he was later dealt to the Titans to make up some, for some cap space. So, yeah, Devin Bush to the Browns. That might be a problematic signing because... He's coming back to the division, and let's just hope that the Browns can, that the Steelers can contain their offense and not be made fun of by Devin Bush. Now, uh, next up on our list, speaking of the Steelers, let me just say this. I'm sorry, but I am including three players simultaneously for the Steelers. Because they've all been key additions of star players who have made a name for themselves. And I'm surprised that the Steelers got them at all. And, yeah. These players are... Linebacker Patrick Queen. Cornerback Patrick... And cornerback Dante Jackson. And safety Deshaun Elliott. Patrick Queen, a rivalry signing, has done great things with the Ravens. And I am actually pretty dumbfounded that they actually managed to get him. The Steelers need a much needed depth in the linebacker room and they have that with TJ Watt, Patrick Queen and let's just hope that they can keep adding good linebackers to that linebacker room so they can actually get something done. And yeah, next up is Dante Jackson. The Steelers need desperate additions to the quarterback position. They most recently had Joe Hayden but he was dealt away, or I believe he retired, I'm not sure. So, yeah, they do have Joey Porter Jr., but they need some depth. They lost Patrick Peterson to the Vikings, I believe, but they need some depth. That's simply the fair case. And Dante Jackson being added from the Panthers is a great addition because he's done great things with them. But as the Panthers have restructured themselves in favor of Bryce Young, I guess I put that Next up, Deshaun Elliott. It's a great depth signing, actually. Like, the Steelers do need a safety. They need to add company to Minka Fitzpatrick, who's had a couple of years with the, sorry, with the team now. And, yeah, Deshaun Elliott is a great addition. Let's hope that things work out. This defense have actually been remedying a lot of things. Next up, C.J. Henderson. Oh, I forgot to mention... Oh, yeah, I did mention them. They've been mentioning the positions so far. So, C.J. Henderson is signing with the Texans. C.J. Henderson, a cornerback. C.J. Henderson most recently played for another team, the Panthers. He's also made a name for himself. But now let's just hope that things pan out. Next up, Bobby Wagner, who is a notorious linebacker who played a crucial role in the Legion of Boom defense for the Seahawks. Most recently signed with the Commanders, like I said before, with J.J. Watt, retirement home. Next up, Jordan Fuller being dealt to the Panthers. Uh, I don't know what to say about this signing, honestly. They're rebuilding, but I don't know how to feel. Teran Matthew, the Honey Badger, is being dealt to the Saints. The Chiefs are making some moves to free themselves of some cap space apparently. I mean, although they have the highest paid quarterback in all of the NFL, currently Patrick Mahomes, I'm pretty sure. But, yeah. Teran Matthew to the Saints. Who could have known? I kind of saw it coming, but let's just hope that they can actually make use of that signing because now things are slightly easier for the Steelers and other teams that deserve further playoff contention. Next up, Tredavious White was dealt away from the 
Bills and signed with the Rams. And uh, he was a good player for the Bills, but I believe that the Bills were kind of restructuring themselves in order to make use of their cap and actually be able to compete with their arch rivals, the Chiefs. But yeah, uh, let's just hope things work out for them. And that's it for our defensive line segment, the secondary in this case. And we have three players left in the special teams. These have the kickers, punters, placeholder kickers, kick returners, all that. Then we have three additions. Tommy Townsend is going to the Texans, and he most recently made a name for himself when he, I mean, of course, with a name like Tommy Townsend, hello. But yeah, he most recently made a name for himself when he signed with the Chiefs. He had great things in the Chiefs serving as like a little buddy to Harrison Butker. But let's just hope that things pan out for Tommy Townsend, who's exiting a star team and entering a rising team. Let's just hope things get done. Now, Cameron Johnson, speaking about the Texans, after the Steelers released Presley Harvin III to make up for cap space, they signed Cameron Johnston, a star punter for the Texans. Yeah, good depth, and I hope that they can make it work. The Steelers, again, with another... Sly move by Omar Khan, the con artist that they said recently. And our final move is Nick Folk to the Titans. Nick Folk recently made up for the loss of other star kickers within the Patriots. But yeah, he is now signing with the Titans. He's aging, so he could be retiring here. But let's just hope that things work out. The Titans deserve to make further playoff runs. Now, that's it. That was our list. There are other developments that I would like to cover, but we are running out of time. And apologies again for the noise throughout the entire episode. I've made my best efforts to try and mitigate it, but nada. There are also another, like, other things that we could talk about, such as the NFL's recent ban of the hip tackle, which is, quite frankly, just banning tackles in general, I would say. But on nada. Let's just hope that things work out for them. All teams, except the Patriots and Ravens. Fuck both. Um, mala mala. Those were our player transactions. We are later going to speak about the recent playoffs, the 2023-24 playoffs. And that's all for today. I'm sorry. I, that, that, that noise has just not been compliant at all. Anyways, it's all for today. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.